Chat State, and welcome to another episode of Student Voice. Joining us today is Adam Keith, Peter Moore, and David Childress here to talk about Operation Freedom Dogs, which is a nonprofit organization assisting veterans to train and obtain service dogs. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. Thanks. Good. All right. So can you describe some of the services that Operation Freedom Dogs actually provides? Yeah, so we're taking uh, groups of veterans, uh, combat uh, with combat PTSD, um, through the program where it takes about six months to obtain a, a dog, and we partner the two up and form a team uh, to, to go through all the tasks and learn how to train their own, their own dog. Okay, so what was some of the inspirations that you guys actually had with uh, creating OFD? Yeah, um, I'd met a, uh, a veteran in, a, in my store where I was at work, and, um, and he was looking for help with a dog, and I, I didn't really know, you know, I was asking more questions about why that was, and when he told me the reason he was looking for help, um, I had no idea what was going on, and there was dogs actually making this kind of difference in the lives of veterans. And so a little research, uh, we found out there just wasn't many people out there doing this at all. And, and so the last three and a half years has been a journey to figure out you know, how, to, you know, how many people have this need, you know, how do we do this, you know, how do we, you know, what, what all you have to do to have a service dog, how does the testing work, and so you have all kinds of things to figure out and build, but just uh, to, meet, to meet one veteran who was struggling um, just got into rehab, and, um, and the idea that this dog might help was the inspiration. And, and as soon as I looked on the internet, I mean, it was like I started learning about PTSD, more about combat, and it was uh, it was amazing. Just to, but the need that's out there is astronomical. Most places have a three-year waiting list. So okay, and where uh, where did you come into the picture as a mentor? Well, I'm a you know retired soldier, 30 years in the military. Uh, I've got uh, a bunch of combat tours, and I love dogs, and I love uh, soldiers. And uh, one of the trainers asked me if I would assist, you know, based on my background. Uh, most of the volunteers currently are not veterans, and, uh, you know, I jumped at the chance. It's a chance to save the life of a veteran and the chance to save the life of a dog as well. And, uh, you know, at this point in my life, I'm able to focus on that sort of thing. It's a worthy cause, and uh, you know, you really get to see the impact of your work and your efforts in somebody's life. Okay, so we have one of the students, David, and his dog Foxtrot here with us today. David, can you describe what this program meant to you and like how it's basically affected your quality of life? Uh, yeah, when I first started training with Fox, which was about a year ago, um, you know, I, I was in a I was in a pretty rough spot mentally. Um, barely left my house. I was very isolated. Uh, had had uh, some anger issues. Um, it was causing issues with my kids. Um, you know, not being able to be there for them fully. Yeah. Uh, and not just having Fox around, but going going through and and training with him and dedicating the time to uh, to training him to be a service dog. It had it helped me get a handle on myself and uh, you know and, and he is still there when, when I start getting a little, a little overwhelmed uh, you know I can scratch him behind the ears or whatever and, and it just gives me something to ground myself and and uh, take a few minutes to get a deep breath and, and, and carry on with my day. Okay and can you describe some of the training that the service dogs actually go through during the program? Well because we do train our own dogs, the students, we, we, we learn to train our own dogs. We have to start uh, fairly basic. Uh, me, I'd never trained a dog uh, to do anything. So they had to train me to be able to, to start training my dog. Uh, and that starts with basic obedience training. Yeah. Um, you know, and then uh, we start working up more. Uh, train, you know, we want to train the dog when we're moving, that they, they have a position they have to be in at all times. Um, we, and that getting that dog to where it knows where it needs to be, mm -hmm. stay with you while you're moving, and uh, you know it, it progresses from there. You start teaching them tasks. Uh, you teach them things how to, how to key in on your anxiety, whether that's through their ability to uh, sense the uh, was the rise in the cortisol, mm -hmm. pheromones uh, in the skin, and pheromones in the skin. They made uh, you can teach them to to uh, key onto that and. Whatever action you may have them do, you may want them to hop up on your lap with their front paws, and so you can pet them, or mm -hmm. um, you know, you may just want them to nudge you. Whatever you want that dog to do, yeah. uh, it's really 
it depends on the dog and the needs of the handler, what you, uh, what you actually end up training them to do. They can do a lot of amazing things. If you're having nightmares, they can pull the blankets off your bed or pull the pillow out from under your head. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in a public place and it's crowded, you want a clear space, they can actually do that in a way that it's not offensive or, or aggressive in any way, just by shifting their position from one side of your body to the next and clear out the space directly in front of you. Um, so like I said, there's a lot of different things I can do depending on the needs of the handler. Okay. So with Operation Freedom Dogs being a nonprofit organization, how are you guys able to find volunteers that are coming in and helping you guys out on a daily basis? Uh, really, we've been really blessed. A lot of people have come along uh, just the right time and um, uh, been amazing to jump in and help for this cause. I mean, to, to want to give back, there's no greater community of people that, that deserve that. And uh, that's a huge thing to jump into. And then also, uh, which is really an honor to get to, to meet so many veterans, but because I'm not a veteran myself, but mm -hmm. to uh, to get the graduates to stay in the program and after they graduate and, and mentor and help and so forth. A lot like Pete, you know, Pete didn't go through it, but um, but Pete's been there since day one and and mentoring the guys and he's coaching and you know keeping that going. So they're volunteering and um, you know people just. People just want to help. I think uh, dogs, kids, and, and, and veterans, and all we're missing, is a, I guess, uh, is a kid, you know, at this point, <laughs> but um, rescuing dogs from local shelters, uh, giving a new life, and, um, and also educating the public on, on you know, what, what our, our men and women are going through when they come home from combat. Yeah. And also for us to teach, uh, you know, what a real service dog is and looks like and how they behave. And, uh, is a big deal. So we have a lot of a lot of needs right now for volunteers to, to come in and um, and play big roles. So okay. Was well, there anything you guys would like to add? No. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you, guys, gentlemen, for coming out and joining us. If you're watching and would like more information about Operation Freedom Dogs, check them out at operationfreedomdogs.org. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Student Voice.